it moves across your screen. Great, thanks, Lisa. So we're gonna dive right into the poem and the poem is titled, The Moon Rose Over the Bay, I Had a Lot of Feelings. So let me just get this up on the screen so we can all see it. Great, can everybody see the poem? We made it small so it would fit all on one screen, but now it's not actually all on there, Jen. Uh, let's see if I can do um, with my, let's see if that works. Nope. There we go. Okay, perfect. Is it full screen now, Mary Lynn? Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. Great. The moon rose over the bay. I had a lot of feelings. I am taken with the hot animal of my skin, grateful to swing my limbs and have them move as I intend, though my knee, though my shoulder, though something is torn or tearing. Today, a dozen squid dead on the harbor beach, one mostly buried, one with skin empty as a shell and hollow feeling. And though the tentacles look soft, I do not touch them. I imagine they were startled to find themselves in the sun. I imagine the tide simply went out without them. I imagine they cannot feel the black flies charting the raised hills of their eyes. I write my name in the sand, Donika Kelly. I watch 18 seagulls skim the sandbar and lift low in the sky. I pick up a pebble that looks like a green egg. To the ditch lily, I say, I am in love. To the jeep parked haphazardly on the narrow street, I am in love to the roses, white petals rimmed brown, to the yellow lined pavement, to the house trimmed in gold, I am in love. I shout with the rough calculus of walking, just let me find my way back. Let me move like a tide come in. So Mary Lynn, why don't you start us um, in talking about this uh, Donika Kelly poem and what you saw there. Okay. Um, the first thing I see is that incredible title, which is so strangely two little sentences. That's a pretty unusual. And what happens to me when I read that poem is um, something physical. So the moon rose over the bay. And so there's this upward trajectory um, that she makes our eyes move up. And then over the bay, we move down again because there's the bay below. But in the meantime, there's that wash of white light that has come down from the moon. And so she's moved me up and down and, and out in that first little sentence. And then I had a lot of feelings. And so she's already made me feel my body moving in space, so to speak, before she even gets to the poem. And so when I think of the word feelings, I think, okay, there's feeling, there are feelings like love and fear and um, uh, jealousy and um, loneliness and happiness. Um, but there also, I feel the pen in my hand. I feel my heart beating. I feel physically, you know, I can feel things. And so, um, so I started by tracing those feelings through the poem. So the beginning is, I am taken with the hot animal of my skin, grateful to swing my limbs and have them move as I intend. I do that every day. When I'm out walking, I say, this is what it feels like to be walking, you know, and it's so great to be moving my body through space. And also this is me, though my knee, though my shoulder, though something is torn or tearing, it's always some body part talking to me. So I'm totally with her in this and I am feeling totally embodied. And then suddenly today, a dozen squid dead on the Harbor beach, one mostly buried, one with skin empty as a shell and hollow. So now, um, there's also the feeling of these creatures. Um, it felt a little bit like a non sequitur, you know, from my body to today a dozen squid, but we see how it connects. So um, they're hollow feeling, they're, the tentacles look soft, there's more feeling, I don't touch them, there's not feeling. And then I imagine they were startled. So there's the feeling of being startled, which she's imagining. Um, she's imagining the times the tide simply went out without them. So the sort of being abandoned, that feeling, I, I imagine they cannot feel. And now we literally are seeing these black flies on the raised hill of their eyes. And so you, know, you don't want to feel that. Then I write my name in the sand, Donika Kelly. And the 
that would take a stick or a shell or something to feel and to, to write your name um, in the sand. And then she watches 18 seagulls, no commentary, no feeling really about the seagulls or the pebble. Um, and then we're back in the feelings to the ditch lily and the Jeep and the roses. I'm in love, I'm in love, I'm in love. And all of that is present tense. She also is moving me in my feelings through the tenses. So feeling, feeling, um, I imagine, uh, I watch, I write is all present tense. Um, but eventually we're getting, you know, she's moving us toward the future and, and the, the squid that came in are already in the past. Um, and so then we get to, I shout with the rough calculus of walking and now we're back in the body. Like walking across the sand is a rough calculus. Coming off the beach is a rough calculus. I, I love the phrasing of rough calculus for walking. And then she ends with this prayer. So there's a feeling like a yearning. I shout with the rough calculus of walking. Just let me find my way back. Let me move like a tide come in. And the fact that we just saw the tide come in, leave the squid and then go out. So we know that tides come and go. And so there's that echo of the tide that already went out and left the squid. And here she is just wanting to find her way back. She's also mentioned all of these things on the land that ground her, that feel safe. Um, and we, so we end again with the physical feeling of being in the body. So that was the first thing I traced through the poem. Jenny, you wanna talk a little bit about the way the words work? Yeah, thanks, Mary Lynn. Um, so I was taken with this poem in a number of ways. And first, you know, first, first thing I noticed was the, the line breaks the, and the way in which the poem is constructed in the two lines and the three lines. And you see the repetition of that pattern, right? So the Donika Kelly has given us an architecture here um, and a structure on which we can begin to look at the poem. Um, and so I, off, I thought about that as in terms of the tide, right? It's sort of the ebbing and flowing. So I'm seeing the way in which the form and the function of the poem are working together. Um, and I love, um, we talked, when Mary Lynn and I talked about this poem, at, after she traced the feelings, we realized that, you know, the, this whole container of the body, right? The container of the, the, um, the container of the uh, squid, right? Was simply this way in which there's um, of which of sort of imprinting, right? The the individual with on this on this natural world and feeling right that that immediately being taken by the body, and the hot animal of my skin, right? The container and the the feeling of that, as Mary Lynn said, and then the and then how the imagination is also a type of container, a way in which we can also imprint. Um, our ideas or thoughts upon a natural space, which I see a lot of what's happening here. And then I love the part at the middle where don she writes her name on the sand. And here the poet is not only, right, is not only imprinting literally herself upon the sand, but it's also this, um, that imprint is claiming a type of space, right? It's, it's, taking up a type of space here, which I think is really um, part of this poem. And then the specificity of the 18 seagulls, right? The sandbar, the pebble, the Jeep, right? All of that specificity, right? Um, which is almost like this flooding of, of, the of what she sees around her. And then at the end, um, when she starts to imprint or to when she starts to say, I am in love, I am in love, it's another way that the poet's voice and this feeling can take up space. Um, and we had a conversation at the end, um, Mary Lynn and I, and maybe this is a great segue to um, your thoughts on this poem. Um, at, in these last three lines, right? So there's this interesting um, conversation between permanence and impermanence, right? That imprint is somewhat permanent, yet we know that the tide and the name and the sand is going to be impermanent because it, it'll, and it'll come in and out with the, uh, the waves. So at the end, she says, just let me find my way back. Mary Lynn called it a type of prayer, which I love. Just let me find my way back. Let me move like a tide come in. Right. So it's it's it, let me, you know, again, this feeling of sort of being flooded or, in, you know, almost, you know, overtaken. But our question mark was and we'll put this to the group is just let me find my way back where 
right? Is it to the being taken? We're not, I don't know the answer. And then um, to whom is she addressing, right? To whom do you imagine that the speaker is addressing this poem? So those are two potential ways in um, switching the conversation to you. Or if those don't feel like the great, uh, good questions for you, your thoughts on this poem, what do you see in this poem? What, what really drew you in or gave you- uh, Favorite lines, favorite yeah. lines or phrases or words that jump out at you, anything. You can just raise your hand or just speak in, and unmute yourselves and- Hi, everyone. Um, hey, Jillian. Um, when Marilyn was talking about the present tense um, of the speaker, I also realized that the title is okay. past tense. Mm -hmm. And so um, that feels like how the ending is sort of like where she wants to go. And so maybe at the time of writing this or in the future, then she got there. Like, this is how she felt. And then titling it is that she was able to get there. Mm. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's what I, I was thinking about. Oh, I love that, Jillian. I do too. I do, yeah. It just moves us in, into the future, right into the future by, by, by giving us the past and letting us know that she moved. That's, thank you, Jillian. Yeah, thank you, Jillian. Yeah. <laughs> I was struck by the feeling of presence, physicality, Mm -hmm. A death. Mm. Um, the death of the squid, mm -hmm. the seal seagulls, which are predators, mm -hmm. um, skimming the sandbar. Um, and then from this rather um, almost maudlin but real series of feelings, um, this sudden switch to I am in love, but tied to physical items, mm -hmm. tied to the day lily, tied to uh, ditch lily, um, tied to the Jeep, tied to roses, tied to the house trimmed in gold, I still don't know what to think about that particular mm -hmm. phrase. And then the final two sentences, um, which suggest she had moved from these feelings, she was able to walk but not to the destination. She's on a journey um, to the way back in where she was at some point in her life, mm. but not yet back there. Um, uh, as um, uh, uh, Jenny and uh, Mary Lynn suggested, those last two sentences are really quite phenomenal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Does anybody want to speak to that? Or, um, cause I would love to say something to it but I want to give other people a chance. Is that Henrietta, are you waving your hand? Mm -hmm. Yeah, go ahead, unmute yourself. Yeah, hi, yes. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah. okay. Okay, so I, interesting enough, I saw this as a poem of great joy um uh beaches um the shore and uh, the ocean the sky symbolisms for all of those things are in there um a british re writer i've been reading recently talks about shores as liminal or transitional spaces deeply profound between change and transition um and speaking to the previous speaker um, about the move, he, that takes her back in that last line back to the having them move as I intend, um, which starts out to me as the, there's a lot of the joy of a child at the beach, which is she's moving, she's, she's enjoying her body, um, she's writing her name in the sand, um, she picks up a pebble, which is an egg, symbol for life, 
as opposed to squid, which have died. So we have a lot of juxtaposing images here, positive, negative. Um, uh, but as I said, ending with this, this joyful um, last, uh, well, yeah, the last three verses of I am in love written in italics um, being a, a, a huge just exclamation of joy. Is it a person? Is it the earth? Is it the world? Is it the fact that she is alive? Um, to me, I just, I see a lot of balance in all of these images. Um, I think I hit all of the things I wanted to say. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right, moving in and out with the tides, right? The moving, the moving in and out, up and down with the birds and the moon. I mean, there's a lot going on in here. Beautiful. Good, I'm glad. Yeah. Anybody else? I can't see everybody. Can um, You can just unmute and speak out. Go ahead, Rosa. You can just jump in. Well, this is my bizarre take. Is I thought of it as a singles bar, someone who used to go to a singles bar. Um, she left this relationship. Suddenly she's with all these other single women sort of stranded on the beach, mm -hmm. kind of wondering how you got there. And now she is in love again. And mm -hmm. thinking about that time, the, you know, seagulls circling. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> other parts of the poem, favorite lines or surprises? This is Mary, pardon me, this is Mary speaking. Um, I, I thought maybe it's related to what Rosa, you just said um, when you spoke about going to the singles bar, but mm -hmm. I felt like I went on the walk with her mm -hmm. and that there were lots of things she took me to, places she had gone in that walk. And I, I thank, thankfully, both of you also broke it down so I could take it a little deeper than I'd originally um, viewed it, but I, I like so much that it began with gratitude. Then she talks about death and the squid, and you can almost imagine her doing the very thing she's doing in real time. And then when she's coming out of this, she sees the seagulls, and then she's, oh, I'm back. Yeah, I'm in love. Kind of that's how I started, grateful because I swung my limbs. And it was in that sense, a pleasure to read, to have gone with her from one place to another. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I agree, I felt the walk. I felt myself on the walk too. Even to being able to see the Jeeps park, parked on the street, you know, like that, that was so, so visible to me. Who else, favorite lines? Well, you had asked if there were any surprises, and I would surprises, say, yeah. I would say that the the jeep was a surprise because we mm -hmm. we have been so much in the natural world. Mm -hmm. um, but it's a, you know it's a fun surprise, you know, because that um, that really brings you there. I can really see that jeep parked hap haphazardly on the narrow street. Um, I I just would add that I definitely did not interpret this to mean that she is in love with those items that she is addressing, but more that she is just letting the world know that she is in this glorious state of being in love. Mm -hmm. I love how, I mean, speaking of that, Margaret, it's just in the poem, notice how, and Mary Lynn touched on this, there's, there's an indifference to the items, right? There's an indifference to the Jeep parked haphazardly. And it's, and it's not par perfectly parallel parked, it's haphazard. And, and yes, there is a specificity and, and um, Henrietta, I like what you said about the egg, but the, the indifference of nature allows her to even be more exuberant, even more in love, not only with the hot animal of her skin, but also in love with, um, you know, what's around her and then potentially as uh, finding her way back to potentially somebody, else, you know, to uh, a lover or yeah, mm -hmm. somebody that she's in love with. I think we've, I think we've, we've uh, proven here among us that this is a layered poem and that some of us hear joy in the end and some of us hear yearning and some of us are really aware of the presence of death that tide coming in is going to go out you know um that there's just so much in here um in a you know pretty simple uh 
syntax mm -hmm. and imagery and form. She gets she gets there. Uh, no one mentioned the the rose. Um, it is a decaying rose blossom. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. Again, there is a mournfulness of passing um, that I was struck um, throughout the uh, poem. Um, whenever she pointed out something alive other than herself, um, it was past its prime. Hmm. Um, in fact, way past its prime. It was a dead squid, uh, rose petals browning at the edges, about to fall off the rose. Um, I, I did not see the joy. I saw a, learn, a longing. Mm -hmm. um, I saw I am in love, but it's, I, I didn't understand the love except perhaps the love that she is still capable of finding her way back in. We do bring things to poems, don't we? We do bring things to the things that we read. And so for someone that just the joy of being on a beach and moving on a beach suffuses you know the words here with that feeling um yeah there are, we're all we're all bringing our stories to this poem i think a big takeaway from for me for this poem is just um accepting you know everything um you know all the imperfections like of the uh haphazardly parked jeep and um you know just savoring the the rose even though you know it's not its prime moment it's browning a little bit, but that's okay. Um, and you know, even the dead squid, you know, that's that brings the poet some sadness and uh, and empathy. But she's uh, she's still in love, and um, so I think this poem is just about um, acceptance and um, savoring the moment. Mm. Uh, I don't really remember this, Dante. We talked about that Japanese phrase "wabi sabi" when something is beautiful, even when it's turning you know even when it's going over this that's those roses feel very wabi-sabi to me yeah. mm -hmm. and i think that maybe the the place that the poet was um hoping to come back to is just the the moment in which the poem was written and mm -hmm. i think maybe uh mm -hmm. the writing of the poem was her way to go back there so that's yes. yeah i like that I um I saw the the poem as as sad um or bittersweet um and the I am in love was something that surprised me after um reading the images that were more mournful um and to me it seems like she is feels like she's left on the beach alongside the squid mm -hmm. and she just wants to find her way back to the let her tide pull her back to with wherever she was before and she feels like she's left in love perhaps in a relationship or a friendship or something ended in a way where she felt she was still in love, she is still in love, and yet the other person or whatever happened, they were the ones who left. Um, mm. And that's where I feel like the the imagery of the dead things or like the withered things, it's like relates to this relationship that has also ended, but she still feels like a part of it. Mm. I think I heard that, Jillian, what you're saying, in the way Jenny read it, mm -hmm. um, when I read, read this poem to myself, I wasn't sure how to read those. I am in love. I am in love. I am in love, like happy. But Jenny read it as a pretty straight, I don't know how you, Jenny, could you do it again? But it, there was a certain, like 
part of what you're saying, Jillian, you know, I, I, I think is in that, not desperate, like, but there was a little edge to that to me. Yeah, I hear what you're saying. Yep. Mm -hmm. This is a great discussion. Thank you, friends. You really, this is what was the best part of teaching is <laughs> you learn so much more about what you thought you knew something about. Thank you. Thank you. So are we, I don't know where we are time-wise. Are we ready to move to our next thing, Jen? I think so. I, I think, think so. so yeah. yeah, yeah. So um, I think what I'll do, Mary Lynn, is copy and paste this and put it in the chat so people okay. can just see it. Okay. Um, so okay. Um, let me just do that. And then I'm going to, um, and then we're going to move into the writing piece. So yeah, we have a few prompts um, and I want, and they'll, some of them do uh, relate back to the poem itself. So that's why you'll be able to access it in the chat if you want it. Um, just a few things to notice here in the actual structure of the poem, the use of the line and the line break, and then the repetition, the present tense, right? Notice how she's using punctuation, right? The use of commas and, you know, as we call end stopped lines with periods at the end, there's all sorts of ways in which the poem is constructed on that level um, that, you could use in your poem. <laughs> um, okay, let's see here. I have to get back. I'm just gonna stop. Friends, talk amongst yourself for a minute. I'm gonna stop sharing. <laughs> oh, wait, no, I don't have to. <laughs> I got it. <laughs> Yay, okay. <laughs> I'm, yeah, here are the discussion questions. I think we looked at those. Yeah. So, yep. oh. Whoops, I oh, you're right way over. ahead. Sorry, we got to, we are. just okay, now right over here. to get to the pictures of us again. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but Jenny, we just need you to copy and paste the poem into the chat. Great, Mary Lynn, would you like to read the prompts as I'm doing that? I'd be happy to do that, Jenny B. Thank you. Okay, so here were some ideas we thought. Um, so we hope you have some pencil or paper or your you know, laptop, you know, open a doc, Word doc or something. Um, and again, this is all, nobody's gonna see this that you don't want to see this. So this is really just a stretch. So um, remembering the words from the poem that resonated for you. I mean, the poem will be there, but you could just work from what stays with you, what echoes right now for you having spent some time with this poem. Use those words to guide your way into a poem, perhaps opening you up to new ways of seeing. Or take a line or a phrase from the poem and use that as the opening line of your own poem. You write, remember DFWs, friends? Do you just you know, use that as your as your starting point? Um, write your own poem inspired by Donika Kelly's poem, by our discussion, by being on Zoom, by your feelings, 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 um, sensations, anything at all. Or write a poem about the about you in the natural world, you moving through the natural world. Um, use the language of nature, trees, animals, biology, et cetera, and explore the connection and or tension of your human imprint on the natural world. Today, I saw in quick succession a fox, a really beautiful, healthy red fox, and over it flew a peregrine falcon. I was in heaven for that moment where I was seeing both of those in a parking lot, a, a, an apartment complex parking lot, a fox and a falcon. Oh, so um, anyway, okay, so take 10 minutes. Um, so I'm going to put the poem and the prompts in the chat in Great. just a second. So yes. Um, okay. and yeah, but you can also start from, you know, wherever your memory of is, um, you don't have to wait for that or well, you can. So I've added the prompts um, just to give you a refresher and a reminder, and I'll add the poem now.
friends, I apologize. For some reason, the um, poem is not allowed. I'm, I'm not able to put the poem in the chat. Well, maybe you can share your screen again and then sure. the poem will be a poem. We don't need to see one another's faces while we're writing. Very good.
we have a Rachel <laughs> has just joined us. Friends, take another minute or so, and then we will reconvene. Hopefully, we'll see the, <laughs> the baby. Oh, Rachel. <laughs> Rachel, did you bring okay. your baby? I am so sorry. <laughs> oh, no, sorry. We're no, so sorry. Happy. We want to see the baby. <laughs> okay. I don't know what I look like. Okay. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I hope I didn't interrupt your flow. I was never this late to class. Can I get up? A, a you were never late to class. Hi, never. Oh, hi, Rachel. Ever. Hi, guys. Baby. We're sitting here waiting for our rabbi to call about the bris. And I was like, <gasps> it's not seven o'clock. Blame him. Oh. Hi. Hi, Rachel. Oh, so I, sweet. I miss you guys. We have poetry it's and so a sweet. newborn. What is his name? What is his name? Daddy. <laughs> Benjamin. Oh. You're so funny. Benjamin. Benjamin Simon. Oh, beautiful. Well, we're glad to see you. It's I'm glad to see you too. It's actually Please perfect call. timing. We're going to switch. Yeah, we're just <laughs> it was perfect okay. timing. Yeah. We'll be quiet. Okay. We'll just listen. <laughs> he is a poem. Uh, for real. So. All right. Oh my goodness, time has flown. When you're I know, I know. Eyes. My God, I was really writing. Okay. Would anybody like to share or feeling brave? Mary, I didn't and, know. And, it, and as we always said, you know, you, you can share what whatever you have, or you can just share a line. Like, you know, that this came or this is interesting to me. Uh, I don't know where this is going or anything, anything at all, any pieces or parts. Um, and well, this is since I have the most tenuous relationship to AFS <laughs> being but a parent, um, I'll, I'll start. I would call that an essential worker. I would say that. Was <laughs> <laughs> I planted a tree. My parents died. But not like squid trapped on a hostile beach. A conclusion sought out. The destination of a walk with no destination. A memorial service, an Irish wake, a granite tombstone? No, a tree. A short-lived short flowering cherry whose petals as they um, mature and fall on the ground. That is the spectacle like snowflakes. Mm -hmm. An oak would not be their choice. Oh. Snaps, Bob, snaps. Is that good? Snaps are good. Snaps are gratitude for sharing. That's right. <laughs> For those of you who are in class who gets all those lines, you know, and then somebody else like me who's still working on line five at this <laughs> point, you know, we work in different at different paces. Yeah. Um, for those of you who are writers, uh, reading is a huge part of being a writer. So as you heard in Bob's poem, he, he really, really used the poem. And I often do that as a writer. I use the structure of the poem that I'm reading. I okay. use some of the language of the poems that I'm reading. It really helps to influence um, my writing. Yeah, what what I'm being influenced here is the repetition. Yeah, um, you know, the falcon rose over the red fox, its wings split the wind. It opened seam of sky and tree. The falcon rose over the fox. You know, I can feel now. I'm going to go back and 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 then you know, I, I I don't know where it's going, but it's it's interesting to me that the repetition will help me get move forward. Mm -hmm. Who else has got a line or two they'll be willing to share? I'll, I'll just share my my very beginning lines, and I tended to feel that there was something a little unsettling about the poem. Um, so I picked on the line: "Something is torn or tearing, heel cupped in water, pebbles pulled loose." Mm. Lovely, Susan. Mm. Snaps. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of a haiku esque start and then yeah, yeah. but you know there's that there's a form called the Renga where they start with a haiku and then the next line the next stanza is two lines 
and then another haiku. And then, so you just keep going there, Susie. <laughs> mm -hmm. We have a couple more minutes. Anybody else? Point of clarification. Um, with the repetition of the haiku, I take it it's like a villanelle with the same haiku repeated? No, not exactly. Um, oh, okay. No, no, this was a ring is fun. And I've, I've done that in class a lot of times. Uh, it's actually the origin of the haiku. Um, we don't need to do a whole lecture here, but it was a it was a game they played in the Japanese court. And you had to try and uh, impress the emperor with your next lines without um, beating him. <laughs> you had to mm. you had to impress without uh, overshadowing. And so um, you had to play off something that was in the, so if the haiku had the word blue in it, B-L-U-E, you could write a two line stanza then that had blue, like the wind blue, B-L-E-W, like you could be witty and play with those. So it, it no, that it's not exactly like a villanelle, although it does, you know, things did, threads did run through, threads did end up running through, yeah. Anybody else, on. a line or two they're willing to share? I could share what I have. Um, my writing mentor kind of wants me to. Um, I am in love, though unrequited. I am in love, though alone. I imagine they cannot, perhaps just to be kinder to myself. Sturdy, strong, unbroken, but alone. I am in love. Mm. It's beautiful, beautiful to see what comes from taking, borrowing a line. Mm -hmm. The call and response between the poem mm -hmm. and then the new poem. Yeah, it's, and the repetition you use there too, Rosa. Really nice. Anybody, anybody? <laughs> <laughs> I'll share what I was working on. Yay. Thank you, Jillian. Okay. I write my name in the sand, Jillian yeah. Ray. My body bends in half to scratch away the sand with a pink shell. The sand piles next to the letters L, L, I. The connecting beams of the complex symbols smudging into the gritty pieces of old life. What was this sand? Each piece was a part of another being in another time. What does it think of me moving it yet again? How many times has it circled the earth? Was it as large as a yellow Jeep? A piece of a bottom feeding conch? What will I be in the time the conch took to become sand? Who will write their name in our sand? Hmm. Wow. <laughs> Wow, we said it at exactly the same time. Do we, do we make a wish now or something? <laughs> wow, Jillian. Mm, 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 mm. Mm -hmm. These are wonderful. These are all just so wonderful. Such um, wonderful borrowings. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We have about four more minutes, Mary Lynn. Yep, I see that. And we want to share something at the end. Um, but mostly I just want to say thank you. This was oh, thank you. It's really wonderful. Um, I'm going to go back. Oh, would it, at last opportunity, as I used to say, the window of opportunity is closing. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is a marvelous opportunity um, to share something of the academic a uh, world and emotional world that for me is 50, 60, 70 years ago. Mm -hmm. um, and um, that's wonderful. Um, also, Mary Lynn, you have had an important role in my family, oh. which continues today. Um, so the uh, opportunity to touch a base with you um, is wonderful. Oh, thank you so much. And tell your boys love from me. 
So we'll be back next week <laughs> for a two-part show. Um, and next week will be very similar. We'll have a new poet um, that we'll introduce you to. That's really part of the fun. Um, but you know, in the meantime, there are opportunities to do a couple of things. First and foremost, um, to share your drafts or continue the conversations on the AFS Connect. And um, I don't know, Lisa, you wanna just put in a quick plug about what that is or how it works? <laughs> Sure. Um, can you hear me? I'm muted. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Okay. So um, AFS Connects is our new alumni online platform that we encourage all of our alumni, and that includes alumni faculty, alumni parents, to join. It's unique to AFS. Only folks part of the AFS community are on this platform, and it's a great tool for our community, and we've connected our seniors as well on the platform so that they, when they're exploring like their senior capstone opportunities, they can reach out to alums and alums can reach out to alums. So it's just a wonderful place to network and share ideas, follow up here. You could share poems. Um, we'll put the link to the recordings from all these sessions are on AFS Connect. So um, if you wanna watch any that you've missed or rewatch this one just to give more thought to the poem. It will all live on AFS Connects. And the um, web address for that is actually abbingtonfriendsconnect.com. Great. And it's very easy and simple to sign up. Thanks. Thanks, Lisa. Um, the, um, it's actually linked here. So when you get this um, PowerPoint, um, and more exciting is that there is a new Mary Lynn Ellis, um, our beloved Mary Lynn Ellis uh, poetry program, which for um, now, and I, I don't know how long, brings in a visiting poet um, to Abington Friends um, School campus. And this year, the inaugural poet for the Mary Lynn Ellis poetry program was uh, the Philadelphia Poet Laureate, Trapita Mason. Um, and so Trapita had an opportunity to work with our fifth graders, fourth graders, upper schoolers, um, and gave uh, a reading in the Muller Auditorium uh, to the upper school and eighth grade. So um, we had a wonderful day. Uh, Trapita had a wonderful day. And in this uh, PowerPoint is a link to uh, Trapita's reading. So when you receive the PowerPoint or click on the PowerPoint, you'll be able to read, you'll be able to see and hear her um, and her wonderful, wonderful poetry that not only inspired Mary Lynn and I and others in the community, but also really inspired the fourth graders and the fifth graders, right? And some of our upper school poets. So it was really an exciting day. Mm -hmm. um, I appreciate everybody's uh, chat um, and um, it's good to see everyone. Mary Lynn, you want to say something? Uh, just thanks again. Thanks for coming. And I, I, I will say I'm, I'm humbled and honored by that day. And I was so, so thrilled that Trapita was an incredible first poet. Um, it was wonderful to meet her and work with her. And um, I'm, I'm working with a, an AFS ninth grader right now who was at her master class and is writing up a storm. So I, I get to see it happen. It's just wonderful. So thanks everybody. Have a great week and hopefully we'll see some of you again uh, next Tuesday. Okay. Yeah. Thank, you. Thank take, you everyone. Great to see everyone. Take, take care. care. Take care. Thanks Lisa for being our tech person. Dante, it's so good to sure. see you. Well, <laughs> thank you. All right, Dante, you have to write a poem now. Dante, <laughs> so good to see you. <laughs> Send it to me, all right? I will. Okay. Good to see you. I'll see you next week. Jillian looks, oh, are you still there, Jillian? This is on my desk. Oh, and wait, I can show I you. I look at it every day. Wait, I can show you my mug. <laughs> but it's downstairs, Jillian, because I use it all the time. Oh, I'm so glad. <laughs> oh, yeah, I use mine too, yeah. Joey, Joey tell, I hope your uh, kids are well. Yeah, Joe, tell him love. Oh, he may be gone. Uh, Rachel had to meet with the uh, had to call had to, had to meet with the <laughs> rabbi. <laughs> <laughs> Good to see you, Jillian. We'll see you next week. Bye. Yeah, we'll see. Yay! Bye. Oh, so nice to see her. I think Joe's probably gone. But I'd love to just chat a minute without. Yeah. Can we? Uh, I'm here. Oh, oh, Bob's still here. Bob's still here. Thank you for sharing so much, Bob. And and really, thank you so much for that generous comment. And I do think of your kids and hope all is well.
um, um, Alex in particular, um, <laughs> though he's very much the tech geek <laughs> in a high tech job. Yeah, we do that. In a, living in a big house over Boulder, Colorado. Wow. Um, he still loves the um, opportunity you gave him and he uh, succeeded in um, university um, uh, very well uh, because of his ability to write and create. Well, I, I wasn't alone in that job. We do a, you know, we were, it was a team effort, but, um, but I'm glad it, yes, um, indeed. but I'm glad it worked for him and, and it, he felt good going to school and do tell him hello. Okay. And we'll see you next week. I surely will. Bye-bye. Okay. Good night. Bye.